Well, good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, January 26, 2021. It is a great day to be alive. This is the day the Lord has made, even though it is quickly drawing to an end. It has been an unusual day for uh, me and my family. Tammy was very pleased when she got up this morning and read the message that her school was closed. She knew she already had a delay when she went to bed last night, but was very happy to find out that uh, she could go back to bed. Even though she didn't get back to sleep, she, you know how it is. Just getting back in bed and underneath the covers on a cold day, that is a, uh, a pleasant uh, feeling, a pleasant experience. And uh, so she got at least a day off and was able to do some of the things that she wanted to do around the house. And, and I uh, went ahead and spent the day at home with her, did a lot of work here. Uh, related to uh, church stuff and everything, one of which was finishing up Bible study for tonight, and we'll take a look at that in just a little bit. But I hope that you are warm and dry wherever it is that you are and that uh, you didn't lose power as a result of the freezing rain and everything. We did not. I had a nice warm fire going all day, so a very pleasant experience there and got to stay inside the whole time, didn't have to get out on the roads for any of you that did have to get out on the roads, been praying for you, and uh, just hope that everything went really, really well for you. I uh, want to share some stuff with you before we get into our prayer requests and our Bible study for tonight, and that is in relation to um, our reopening of our church on Sunday, February the Coming up in less than two weeks, <laughs> we get to gather once again in our church building. It's not that we haven't uh, benefited from and enjoyed our online experience, but we we love each other and look so much forward to being able to be in person with each other. For now, on Sunday mornings, we will just have our 1045 service. No Sunday school. Um, and because of the state mandate uh, to protect everyone's health and to show love for everyone else, um, we ask that everybody keep their mask on the whole time that they are there at church, from the time they walk through the door until the time that they leave, as much as is possible. Um, to further limit our risk um, of contracting uh, COVID or anything else in the middle of flu season, uh, we will be limiting the amount of singing that we do. We'll still do it, but we'll st we're limited a little bit, do you know less verses, less songs, whatever it might be. Um, in order to uh, help keep everybody safe and make them feel as comfortable as possible. For now, there will be no junior church or nursery, partially because of COVID concerns. But frankly, uh, we need some extra staffing in order to be able to provide these vital ministries uh, to the families of our church. So if you would be willing to help in either the nursery or in junior church, please let me know so that we can get those up and running as quickly as possible. We will also go back to meeting in person on Wednesday nights beginning uh, Wednesday, February the 10th. That means that we will no longer have these weeknight Bible studies uh, three nights a week. Now, I'm going to miss participating with you uh, in Bible study on, a, a, um, on this regular basis throughout the week, but... I will gladly substitute being able to see your faces and be in your presence. Um, though I've enjoyed uh, this experience, I, I want to go back to being with you guys. Now, as always, we will continue to broadcast our Sunday morning service as well as our Wednesday night Bible study here on Facebook. So you can continue to join with us. Um, if you are unable to uh, be physically present with us because of distance or whatever, whatever other limitation you might have, or if you're simply uncomfortable being in an in-person environment right now due to COVID. But I would strongly encourage you to, as much as is possible and as soon as possible, to get back to in-person gathering together with a church family uh, because that is the most effective way for you to build relationships and deepen your walk with the Lord. And so we're going to be have that opportunity available for you very soon. For those of you that might not uh, yet be a part of our church family, at least not in a physical kind of way, but many of you have been joining us uh, on Sunday mornings or here in our weeknight Bible studies uh, virtually, 
we would encourage you, if you do not have our church home presently, come. Uh, be a part of who we are there physically. What we do online is very close to what we do in person. Uh, it's just that we have a piano for the singing. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. Um, and, you know, we add a couple of other things in there, but my preaching is still the same, and and we smile just as much. We'll have masks on, uh, so that'll, you know, hide those smiles a little bit. But come, be with us, and uh, we would greatly appreciate you being there. Let's take some time to uh, deal with some prayer requests. If you've got a prayer request, go ahead and put it there in the comment section, or you can message it to me. Um, and uh, via private messenger. Oh, I almost forgot. You're probably looking at my sweatshirt that I've got on right here, and you're wondering, mm, what picture is on there? And so you're not wondering the whole time, you know, trying to be able to see. I'll go ahead and show you here if I can stand up a little bit. That is my daughter and grandson and granddaughter there. And yes, their name for me is Baba. And uh, so I got this sweatshirt several years ago. And uh, pulled it out today. Keeps my body warm and my heart warm, if you know what I mean. But bad prayer request. Uh, if you've got some family members that need Jesus as their Savior, they're not saved yet, uh, put you know whatever you feel comfortable there in the comment section or message it to me. First names, last names, whatever you feel comfortable with. Be in prayer for the Biden administration uh, and their salvation. Um, I... You know, do not know for sure where they stand with Jesus Christ, but some of the things that they are pushing would seem to indicate there are some spiritual needs there. So pray for them as far as their salvation. Pray for uh, President Trump and Melania as well. It looks like they're going to have a rough road in the days ahead. Um, but pray as well. You know, I don't know for sure where they stand with Jesus. Pray in regard to that as well. One thing that's been on our minds much is COVID. We need to be praying for people that have that disease right now. Mention some of them. Bill Lease, a uh, member of our church. Uh, also, Little Capon Baptist Church. There are many cases of COVID in that church, including the pastor, Pastor Tony Baker, and his wife, Christine. Also today, I found out about a couple of more. Um, uh, Shane Phillips' grandmother, Grandma June, uh, has COVID. Thankfully, she is asymptomatic right now. Thankful for that. And then Chrissy's uncle, Uncle Ted, um, apparently looks like he might have ha might ha um, have a uh, blood clot, uh, having some breathing issues. So please be in prayer for him. Also, we have been praying for uh, a friend of Tammy and mine down in Georgia named Cindy Edwards. Uh, we found out yesterday that she died. She fought long and hard against cancer. She was in the hospital for an infection. While in the hospital, she was confirmed to have COVID. And she went home. She's Christian, so she's with Jesus. So please be in prayer for um, her husband, Mark, and her um, adult son and daughter and the rest of the family um, as they deal uh, with that loss. Be in prayer for the Voigt family as well as they are dealing with a, a loved one. Then I'd ask you to be in prayer for Tammy's family. I ask you to pray for her family last week in regard to the upcoming anniversary of uh, her dad's death. Well, tomorrow is the anniversary of both her dad's funeral as well as his birthday. Yes, that's correct. He uh, was buried on his birthday so if you could be in prayer for her, I would appreciate that. Be in prayer for Joe and Ella's daughter, Brenda Yawn, as she is dealing with blood pressure issues. And then Jacqueline Taylor, Joe and Ella's great-granddaughter, um, has been on a heart monitor for about a month now as they try to uh, diagnose uh, some uh, a heart condition, some heart issues that are going on. And then just a little bit ago, I got a text from Clyde McCarty saying that Trudy is going to need a hip replacement as soon as possible. And th this is not the hip that she uh, uh, injured back several months ago. This is a right hip. And so please be in prayer for Trudy. Um, I said, you know, let us know how we can help. And he said, send us prayers. So let's do that. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you tonight with many needs in our hearts. 
I've mentioned multiple here tonight, and there are lots of others that we could mention if we would take the time, and especially if we were all in a physical environment together. So I pray, Father, that you will accomplish these according to your will. I know, Father, even as we're going to talk about pain tonight, these are things that bring pain into our lives. So I pray that them, rather than than them pushing them pushing us away from you, I pray that it will cause us to draw close to you so that we can be wrapped in your arms of love. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All month long in our Sunday morning services, we have been dealing with questions that people ask. On uh, January 3rd, we dealt with the question, can God use me? The answer was yes. Next, we dealt with, can a Christian lose his salvation? No. Followed by, how should a Christian respond to a government he feels is illegitimate? Next Sunday's question will be this one. What does God say about the gift of tongues? <laughs> that should be an interesting discussion. I debated between doing that question and this one. Do aliens really exist? Well, I'll save that one for another day, but the short answer is, yes, they do. This past Sunday, we dealt with the most important question. How do we know that God exists? I encourage you to listen to that message if you have not already done so. It's here on our Facebook page. I'll not review the whole thing except to say that we discussed some logical arguments to support the belief that God exists. Plus, we looked at some things that you lose if you uh, if God does not exist, as well as some things that you gain if God is there and you are willing to submit to his authority. I shared some powerful truths in God's word. It would benefit you to hear them and it might enable you to help someone else who is struggling with their faith. The case we made for God's existence uh, rests largely on rational arguments, arguments from reason, logical arguments. That, however, is not where most people live. They live in the emotional realm. As I said, we're going to be going back to uh, in-person church here soon and doing some singing. And a large part of our worship is the music that we do. The choruses and hymns we sing combine both theological truth and emotional expression. Few are better at this than one of my favorite hymns, of which I have many, that we usually sing at Easter. It's called, He Lives. The last line of that hymn, the one that hits the highest note, says this. I'll not sing it for you. I do that on Sunday morning. I'm not going to do that here. But it says this. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. You hear people say sometimes something like this. I know that God lives because he has changed me. This is the experiential argument for God's existence. That argument is both the weakest argument for God's existence and the strongest argument at bo both at the same time. It is weak if it is all that you have. See, many things can change a person's life in a positive way. If they meet the person that they're going to marry, if they get a job that will get them to financial stability, if they have surgery to fix the problem that is finally properly diagnosed, all of those things are life-changing in a positive way. So to say that God is real simply because your life has changed and because you attribute that change to God's intervention is unverified, easily doubted reasoning. True, no one can deny that a change has happened, but they can easily deny its source if all that you have is your perception. On the other hand, if you take the rational arguments for God's existence and add your experience to it, then you have a powerful tool with which you can proclaim God to people. Your testimony, 
That's what we're talking about here. Your testimony is something that will ring in people's ears, lodge in people's hearts, potentially change how they feel about God and spiritual things, and perhaps soften the stubborn refusal to respond to the Spirit's prompting. An emotional, experiential story can break open the crack that a rational argument produced. Hey, the Hallmark Channel knows that. All of their stories are emotional, experiential stories, and yet they, they grab a and they lift your spirits. Let me caution you, though. If you believe in God's existence, your confidence that He is there is based solely on your feeling that He is present in your life then what happens when you go through a dry period in which it seems that God is very distant, so much so that you have a difficult time seeing him at all? Most people go through dry spells. Some people's faith does not survive them. As I indicated Sunday, the most often cited reason that people give for not believing in God, God's existence is the presence of so much pain and injustice in the world. This obstacle is either stated from a perspective of observation, I see so much pain, or one of experience, why do I hurt so much? In both situations, the mind gives way to the heart. What begins as a rational question eventually becomes a tear-stained plea. God, where are you? So let's quickly, in the limited amount of time that we have, deal with this pain issue. First, what is the source of suffering? You might say, if I were God, I would have created a world where suffering does not exist. Well, good for you. That is exactly what God did. So what happened? Adam and Eve made a horrible choice in the Garden of Eden. They rebelled against God's command and ate the forbidden fruit. Their quest for pleasure resulted in heartache for them and for us. In general, then, all suffering comes from the sinful choices our first ancestors made and the resulting punishment that God gave. Over 400,000 American citizens have died from COVID since the pandemic began. While their death certificates list COVID as the cause, those death certificates could just as easily list sin as the cause. Not that their sin caused their death, but that sin brought death as the inevitable end for every human life. Romans 5.12 says this, Death spread to all men because all sinned. Now hear me, I did not as the result of your sin. But that sin is the reason that we have disease at all. However, some of your suffering is a direct or indirect consequence of your choices. Before you go accusing God, consider where much of your day-to-day -day pain comes from. It comes from you. For example, you chose to play football in high school even though you heard your male relatives complain about the pain an old football injury produced for them. You do not understand how God could allow your spouse to cheat on you, even though you knew that he left his first wife to marry you. Why did you think he would change his behavior? See, if you do not admit the true source of your suffering, then you will continue making bad choices and you will continue suffering for them. They may sound harsh to lay some of the or your pain on you, but I would rather defend God than defend you. 
You cannot always control the pain produced by your environment or by those whose bad choices inflict you. But you can learn from bad choices that you make and choose to make better ones. God can help you do that if you will look to Him. Second, if you could er eradicate all pain, would you? Most of you listening to me right now are parents and <laughs> probably grandparents. Does pain serve a purpose in the lives of your children and grandchildren? We know that pain helps to prevent dangerous activities like touching a hot stove top or jumping an unstable ramp with your bike. It also serves to prevent further injury once an accident has happened. The reason you baby your ankle after you sprain it is because it hurts. <laughs> Imagine what would happen if you continue to walk in it normally. The level of injury would increase and healing would never happen. I have just described to you the once dreaded disease of leprosy. Lepers do not feel pain, so they do not know when they have injured themselves, do not seek treatment for the injury, and keep on using that limb as they normally would, which increases the seriousness of the injury. Folks, pain is a gift. If you do not agree, message me and I will tell you the story of a little girl who felt no pain and would bite off the tips of her fingers to get her parents to do what she wanted. Let's say though that we lived in a world void not only of pain but also of danger. Would pain still be valuable at that point? Think about it. A world without challenges, a world without the possibility of failure, what kind of a generation would that produce? A generation without character, strength, or imagination. You have heard the saying, necessity is the mother of invention. Leaders arise only in a problem-ridden environment. Even Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream speech came as a result of a struggle. Listen to these words from James chapter 1. It says, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. That's James 1, verses 2 and 3. Third, the God whose only pain was seeing the suffering that his creatures brought on themselves provided the means for the eradication of pain and its cause, sin. Rather than staying aloof from our pain or saying, you made your bed, now live in it, God had compassion and entered into our pain. God the Son, who only ever made good choices, left a pain-free environment to become one of his pain-filled creatures. He cried when he came out of his mother's womb. He was now cold. Throughout his life, he experienced hunger, thirst, weariness, betrayal, loneliness, false accusation, temptation, bullying, misunderstanding, and so much more. And then when it came time for his life to end, he did not get the kind of end that most of us seek, namely dying in our sleep in a comfy bed surrounded by our loving family. No, he died an excruciating, humiliating, public death. God entered our pain so that he could end it. God could have turned his back on us. He could have created another universe and refused his new creation the gift of free will so that they would never turn their back on him. But by so doing, he also would have left his new creatures without the capacity of ever truly loving him. Fourth and finally, 
God does not intend for your pain to last forever. <laughs> the same Jesus who died a horrific death experienced a victorious resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 55-57 says these words, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus defeated death and is now preparing a place where his followers will enjoy life without pain, but will still be able to grow, imagine, and build. The choice is yours. You can deny God's existence because of your pain, or you can run to his arms for him to soothe your pain. The first option will result in you suffering eternally. The second will make your pain forever cease on the day that you close your eyes for the last time. Do you want to accuse the God whom you say does not exist? Or do you want to embrace the God who wants to embrace you? Choose wisely. Let's pray. Father, it is true that we do not always understand why things happen the way that they happen. Pain is rampant in our society. Sometimes without seeming cause, and definitely sometimes it happens to those who seemingly are innocent. But I know that you are a good God, a loving God, a wise God, and that one day we will stand before you complete if we have our sins dealt with through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Folks, I know that I've not answered all the questions related to this topic in just the 20 minutes that we have spent here together tonight. So on our Facebook page, I put a link to an article. I would encourage you to read it. The title of the article is God and the End of Pain. It expands on some of what I've said here tonight. Let me also suggest a book to you. Uh, this is a book that I read a long time ago, and that is a very valuable one. The title of the book is Holding On to Your Faith Even When God Does Not Make Sense, and it was written by James Dobson. I found the book very helpful, and I think you would too. Um, I'd be hope if you live in um, in our area, I'd be happy to loan it to you. You can also find it online uh, if you would like your own copy or if you do not live locally. Another older book is the uh, titled "The Problem of Pain" by C.S. Lewis. I think you would find that one helpful as well. Please send me your questions related to this topic. Let's talk. Um, we can be an encouragement to each other, I believe. Other pre people have expressed the same concerns that, that perhaps you have. And if you found even here tonight to be valuable, please share them uh, on your Facebook page or with your friends, family, whoever else it might be. You never know who might uh, benefit from it. Comment, let me know if these things are valuable and worthwhile to you or if you've got some suggestions in another area. Well, thank you for being with us tonight. If you missed the Sunday morning message or if you came in late tonight, go back and view whatever it is that you have missed. Uh, be back with us tomorrow. We're going to discuss some different perspectives on God's existence, ranging all the way from atheism to pantheism. I invite you to be with us here on Facebook this coming Sunday morning as well. Again, we're going to do with this question, what does God say about the gift of tongues? We'll start right at 1045. Don't be late. Stay warm. Stay dry.